Tibbs here, Tibbs Gaming, uh, trying out a new sort of video for the first time, uh, calling it Deck Deconstruction. Uh, just going to kind of break down what's in a deck. Uh, eventually I plan to do this with some decks I have myself, like for modern and whatnot, but for this first one and probably the next couple, I decided to go ahead and break down the Commander decks from 2018. Uh, we're going to start with Exquisite Invention today. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to open this up. I've opened it, but I haven't really done anything more than that with it. So I'm just going to take a look at it, see what we think of the cards in it. Just kind of go through it. So we've got Sahili the Gifted is the uh, intended Planeswalker Commander. Each of the decks for 2018 had a Planeswalker Commander. Um, she's pretty good for what the theme is, you know, artifacts. Making a token is always a good ability. It can defend her, especially on a plus one. Um, gives your next, the, her other plus one gives your next spell basically affinity for artifacts, which is pretty good. And her negative seven is, you know, ultimates are what they are copy all your artifacts and they gain haste and then exile them at the beginning of the next end step so four cost walker four loyalty two plus one abilities is nice and they're both fairly good and on theme if you're going for an artifact deck which this one is so i like her fun card uh, i'm just gonna toss that get into the cards here so we've obviously got the smaller copy of Sahili. And then each one also has two alternate commanders. Uh, this one has Brutaclad here. Four generic, a blue, and a red. For a Artificer, legendary. 4-4 four, four artifact creature. Uh, creature tokens you control have haste. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 2-1 blue mirror artifact creature token. Then you may choose a token you control. If you do, each other token you control becomes a copy of that token. So, it makes a mirror, but then you can turn the mirror into a better token if you have one. So, that's fun. Um, kind of a weird ability, not something I've really seen before, so that's cool. Alright, and then we have Thanos, who's an old character, as evidenced by the fact that he was Urza's apprentice. Uh, one blue and a red for a 1-3 legendary human artificer. He has haste, and for a blue, a red, and tap, you can copy target activated or triggered ability control from an artifact source. You may choose new targets for the copy. So that's fun. I'm sure there's some artifacts that work really well with that. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, we've got tokens up next so mirrors survivors thopters uh, a clue and then these are double-sided got some constructs some servos more mirror other construct thopters so it's nice that they include the tokens with these decks i like that feature uh, we've got loyal drake in here two and a blue for a 2-2 two -two drake with flying it has the lieutenant ability which i think is a ability they brought back from another commander set uh at the beginning of your comp at the beginning of combat on your turn if you control your commander draw a card so the lieutenant abilities basically are just they only do things if you control your commander so it's a cool thing for commander decks obviously nice kind of unique uh loyal apprentice Another lieutenant card, a generic and a red for a human artificer, a 2 1. It's got haste. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander, create a 1 1 colorless thopter uh, artifact creature token with flying. That gains haste until end of turn. So, another token generator spits out tokens as long as you control your commander. So, for 2, that's a pretty good card. You just have to have your commander out. Uh, Geode Golem. 5 generic for a 5-3 artifact creature golem. Trample. Whenever Geo Golem deals combat damage to a player, you may cast your commander from the command zone without paying its mana cost. 
So, I mean, in the right build, that's a real good card for Commander. Obviously, specifically Commander, it wouldn't have any use anywhere else. Uh, but dropping Commander in for free is really good. It does cast still, so it will count against you if you have to pay the tax on a future casting, but that's all right. Uh, Ethereum Sculptor, you know, coupon for one off all your Art of Hex spells is always a good card to reprint into the Royal. Um, it's basically just a bounce spell with Kicker to draw a card. Not really on the theme of artifacts, and I don't know, it's kind of a weird include to me. It's a good card, but not. I don't know why it's here. Um, reverse Engineer costs 3 generic and 2 blue it's got Improvise so you can tap your artifacts and it draws you 3 cards so I mean if you can get the cost down to pretty cheap drawing 3 cards is obviously a good deal when it's cheap so probably something I'd keep around uh, Thirst for Knowledge it's an instant, draw 3 cards then discard 2 cards unless you discard an artifact for two generic and a blue. So draw three, discard one is going to be pretty easy, especially with as many artifact decks as we're playing. Or artifact cards as we're playing. Uh, Tidings. Three generic, two blue for a sorcery. Draw four cards. Um, solid draw spell, but it's sorcery speed. And it's basically, I'd say, worse in this deck than Reverse Engineer for sure. It's not really something I like that much. Put that over there with Into the Royal. Um, Loyal Apprentice spits out tokens. That feels good. Uh, Loyal Drake. Don't like that much. Don't really know what I was doing with my piles here. Geode Golem. Not sure this deck. We'll see what else is in here. But Werther Rogue. Two generic, two blue. Two, two... Human Rogue Artificer enters, create two colorless stopter tokens with flying, and then tap two untapped artifacts you control. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. So, I mean, you can make your big guy unblockable just with the two stopters it makes, or other artifacts you have in play that don't even need to tap for anything else. So, it's pretty handy. Thopter Engineer enters, create a 1 1 Thopter. And gives all your artifact creatures haste, so it seems like a good thing to have around. Maverick Thopterist uh, has Improvise, so you can tap artifacts to lower its cost. Five, though, for a 2-2 two -two that makes two Thopters. I mean, it seems okay. It's on theme, at least, with Improvise and making the Thopters. Uh, Chief of the Foundry, um, uh, other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So a lowered effect, couldn't think of that word. For three generic, it's pretty good. Affects mm, a lot of the creatures, plus a lot of the tokens in this deck. Uh, Commander Sphere, it's an artifact. Um, taps for any mana of your commander's color identity. So in a two-color deck, it's not outstanding, but since we are on an artifact theme, it is does fit with that as well, and you can sack it to draw a card in a pinch. Dreamstone Hedron, uh, six for an artifact that taps for three. So it's a little expensive to get out there, and then by the time you're at six, what's that extra three really? But there's um, probably some stuff in here that can take advantage of all that extra mana and then once you don't need it anymore three tap and sack it to draw three cards so nice artifact uh, Hedron Archive four generic for an artifact that taps for two colorless and you can pay two and sack tap and sack it to draw two cards so I like that a lot of the mana rocks in here can uh, be used to draw cards late game that's kind of a nice dual function for them. Uh, is it Signet? It's a pretty solid mana rock for 
a two color deck. Magnifying Glass, uh, three generic for something that taps for one, uh, costs four and tap it to investigate, which makes it clue, which then costs two to sacrifice that and draw a card. Um, that just seems like a lot of mana intensity. I'm not really a fan. Mind Stone, two generic taps for one, pay one, sack it, draw a card. So again, Mana Rock that replaces itself late game. Uh, Pilgrim's Eye enters the battlefield, search for a basic land, put it in your hand. Um, it's an okay card. It can fix colors if you really need it, but we're only in two colors, so that seems kind of unnecessary. And even though it is an artifact, I just, I'm not a fan. Prismatic Lens, uh, cost two to cast. Um, then you can tap it for one, and you can pay one and filter into another color by tapping it. So, I mean, it, it's two for one. doesn't replace itself late game, so you're just kind of stuck with it once you don't need it anymore. And you don't really need the fixing in a two-colored deck, so I think this is something I would also cut. Scrabbling Claws, one generic for an artifact. Uh, taps target player exiles a card from their graveyard and pay one sack it exile target card from a graveyard draw a card I mean it can replace itself, but I feel like there's better Graveyard hate if you even need that um, Probably something I would cut Soul ring is obviously great, and I'm not even gonna just gonna do that uh, Swift foot boots. I'm a big fan of in commander uh, two generic for an artifact equipment gives hexproof and haste equips for one. Lightning Greaves is debatably better. This is hexproof instead of shroud, but still a solid card. Unstable Obelisk, three generic taps to add one. Pay seven tap and sack it to destroy target permanent. Um, so it's late game removal. Colorless mana, which is good. Uh, early game ramps you a little bit. I think it's, I think it's probably playable. Vessel of Endless Rest. Uh, three generic enters, put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library and tap to add one mana of any color. Uh, we're not too worried about color fixing, um, and it's ETB just, it's there, but I don't think that's something I like. Worn Power Stone, three generic, enters tapped, taps for two. So it's a more expensive soul ring that enters tapped, but it still taps for two colorless, which seems pretty good. Uh, random Island there. I don't know if I shuffled these or rearranged them or just was packaged that way. Can't remember. Echo Storm, uh, three generic, two blue. For a sorcery, when you cast this spell, copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone in this game. You may choose new targets for the copies. Create a token that's a copy of target artifact. So, if you're in a game where your uh, commander keeps getting removed and you have to recast it, this could obviously get pretty crazy. If you have only cast your commander once or twice, it's a little expensive, but if you get up to any more than that, it's really good and... I mean, copying artifacts is obviously good in an artifact deck. Vidalcan Humiliator, uh, three generic and blue for a three-four Vidalcan Wizard. When Vidalcan Humiliator attacks, if you control three or more artifacts, creatures your opponent control lose all abilities and have base power and toughness one, one until end of turn. Uh, getting to three artifacts in this deck is like a joke. Like if you're not at three, something's very wrong. So. He seems real good. Enchanter's Bane. One generic and red for an enchantment. At the beginning of your end step, target enchantment deals damage equal to its converted mana cost to its controller unless that player sacrifices it. Um, it feels really narrow. I realize there's, there's quite a few enchantments in Commander, but it doesn't actually get rid of any enchantments. It just... They're just going to take damage if it's a good enchantment. So, I'm not really a fan in this deck specifically, or overall really. 
Sahili's so Directive. Three red X sorcery. Improvised. You can tap your artifacts to help pay for it. And reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of artifact cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. And put all cards revealed this way that weren't put onto the battlefield into your graveyard. Um, so in a solid artifact deck, you're obviously going to hit a good number of them when you reveal. It's kind of like Genesis Wave for artifacts and then improvise to help cast it faster. I really like it. I think it could do do well in this deck. Treasure Nabber, two generic and a red for a 3-2 Goblin Rogue. Whenever an opponent taps an artifact for mana, gain control of that artifact until the end of your next turn. Um, there's so many mana rocks floating around in most commander games that stealing them even for a turn seems pretty good. We'll keep him in for sure. Uh, Varchild, Betrayer of Keldor, two generic and red for a 3-3. Legendary Human Knight. Uh, deals combat damage to a player. That player creates that many 1-1 one, one red survivor creature tokens. Survivors your opponent's control can't block, and they can't attack you or a planeswalker you control. When Varchild leaves the battlefield, gain control of all survivors. Ah, uh, it's a weird... Generates tokens, gives them to your opponent, and then if it leaves the battlefield, you get those, and they can't attack you, so in multiplayer, it's kind of a political card. Uh... Tokens are obviously useful in this deck, but it's not really on the artifact theme, so I'm not a fan of that card here. Uh, Ancient Stone Idol, 10 for a 12-12. Uh, has Flash, and costs one less to cast for each attacking creature. Has Trample, and when it dies, create a 6-12 colorless construct artifact creature token with Trample. So... I mean, somebody swings big, doesn't have to be at you. Uh, it can be your opponent swinging at another opponent in a multiplayer game, or anytime somebody's swinging, if they're swinging with 10 creatures, it becomes free, and that's not an unreasonable number in a big multiplayer commander game. So, and then when he dies, he makes a 6-12, which is still really good. I, I like this card. I think I will plan to keep it in. Uh, Coveted Jewel it's costs six. When it enters, draw three cards. Add three mana of any one color. Whenever one or more creatures and opponent controls attack you and aren't blocked, that player draws three cards and gains control of Coveted Jewel. Untap it. Oh boy. Um, it seemed like a good card until I realized that people can steal it from you and they also draw the three cards. That feels bad. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of giving things to my opponent. I would just say that needs to go. Endless Atlas. Uh, two generic for an artifact. Tap two and draw, tap it to draw a card. Uh, activate this ability only if you control three or more lands with the same name. So in Commander, unless we have something weird to, uh, copy lands, we're basically looking at we have to control three or more of the same basic. Uh, not a fan. Just gonna go ahead and cut it, I think. Repeatable draw is good, but it's kind of a big restriction. Uh, Retrofitter Foundry. Uh, one generic for an artifact. You can pay three to untap it. You can pay two and tap it to create a 1-1 one, one servo artifact creature token. One and tap it, sacrifice the servo, create a 1-1 one, one thopter with flying. And tap and sacrifice the Thopter to make a 4-4 Construct Artifact Creature token. So it only costs one to play, which is nice. Um, then, I mean, in an infinite mana situation, obviously, you can just make infinite 4-4 Constructs. But otherwise, it gets a little expensive if you want to try it on tapping it multiple times in a turn to, like, really ramp up its abilities, but... It's a solid token token generating card, I would say. So I think I would keep it in for now at least. Uh, Soul of New Phyrexia. Six generic for a 6-6 six, six trample avatar. 
permanent suit control, gain indestructible until end of turn for five generic. And for five and exile it from your graveyard, permanent suit control, gain indestructible until end of turn. Um, and it's all permanent, it's permanent suit control, not just creatures. So, uh, five for that ability seems really good. And it's an artifact, so it's on theme. There's, there's all kinds of upside there. Uh, Ether Gale. 3 generic, 2 blue, sorry, sorcery, return 6 target non-land permanents to their owner's hands. Um, it's a bounce card, but it's a big bounce. 6 targets. Um, feels like it could be pretty useful, and it doesn't specify opponents, so if there's not a lot of threats, you can use it to bounce some of your own ETB stuff. And I think I'd at least try it out and see how it goes. Uh, Inkwell Leviathan, 7 and 2 blue for a 7-11 artifact creature Leviathan. Trample, Island Walk, Shroud. Um, it is an artifact and it is beefy, but other than that, it doesn't really play into the theme other than just being an artifact. So I'm not really... Uh, Sahili's Artistry for generic 2 blue for sorcery. Choose one or both, create a token that's a copy of target artifact, and create a token that's a copy of target creature, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Um, you'd obviously almost always be choosing both, unless you didn't have a target. But copy effects are fun, and copies artifacts, which you're going to have plenty of. Sharding Sphinx, 4 4 Flyer. Whenever an artifact creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may create a 1 1 Thopter artifact creature token with flying. Cost 6, but I mean, that's can get to be a ridiculous amount of token. I mean, when the tokens deal damage, you're going to make more tokens. It can just multiply exponentially. So, Thopter Spy Network. 2 and 2, so 4 for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control an artifact, create a 1 1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. Whenever one or more artifact creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. As we just said with the last card, you're gonna have artifact creatures dealing damage. Um, you're, you're gonna control an artifact, so you'll be making Thopters. One, one Thopter a turn plus, you know, drawing a card for damage is, is obviously good keep him around. Blasphemous Act, uh, 8 generic and a red for a sorcery. Spell costs 1 less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, and it deals 13 damage to each creature. So, uh, again, in a multiplayer EDH game, getting to the 8 that we require to make this spell cost 1 uh, is not hard, especially with your making topters. Um, eight creatures on the battlefield feels really easy. So if you get in a situation where you need to, it seems like a pretty solid board wipe for one mana. Granted, it's only 13 damage, so stuff could survive, but I like it. Uh, Chaos Warp. Two generic and a red. Instant. The owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card of their library. If it's a permanent card, they put it onto the battlefield. Uh, this is usually going to be pretty solid removal. You might get the rare case where they flip the same card or something better. But for the most part, you're going to be using it on a big threat, and they're flipping one card and hoping. I mean, it could just be a land. Uh, this used to be a great card because you could use it to tuck commanders. But now that they've changed that rule, um, I still like it. It's red removal, which is always good. I think we'll keep it, but it's not as good as it used to be. Hellkite Igniter, 5 generic, 2 red for a 5-5 five, five dragon, flying in haste. 1 generic and red gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of artifacts you control. That seems good in here, a little expensive, but um, it's going to be a finisher. For sure. Magma Quake, 2 red and X. For an instant, deals X damage to each creature without flying and each planeswalker. Um, I can see there's a lot of flying in here, so I can see where this has its advantages. But I'm not a big fan of it overall. It's gonna we'll we'll put it in my maybe pile for right now, but I'm not super psyched about it. Blink Moth Urn. 
5 generic for an artifact. At the beginning of each player's pre combat main phase, if Blink Moth Urn is untapped, that player adds colors man one colors mana for each artifact they control. I did say I don't like giving things to my opponent, but however, unless you happen to be playing against another artifact deck, you are going to get so much more advantage from this than your opponents are that I think this is still playable. Uh, Bosch, Iron Golem, costs 8 for a legendary artifact, Creature Golem, 6-7 Trample, 3 and a red, sack an artifact, and it deals damage equal to the sacrifice artifacts, convert a mana cost to any target. Uh, it is removal, but it costs you an artifact and 4 mana, plus he costs 8. I think there's better options out here. Uh, Ducksteel Juggernaut, 5 generic. For an indestructible artifact creature juggernaut. Uh, power and toughness each equal to the number of artifacts you control. Attacks each combat if able, so it forces it to attack, but it's indestructible, so most of the time it's going to survive the attack, and obviously it's going to get big in this deck. So I'd say that's another solid finisher, especially if we can find a way to give it trample. Uh, duplicant. Cost 6. Uh, when it enters, you may exile target non-token creature. And then as long as the as a card exiled duplicate is a creature card, has the power and toughness and creature types of the last creature card exiled with duplicate, it's still a shapeshifter. Um, it's a good removal. Colorless removal is, is nice, especially in blue and red, where um, hard removal isn't super common. Mimic Vat, 3 generic for an artifact. As imprint, whenever a non-token creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do, return each other card exiled with Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard. Uh, pay three and tap it to create a token that's a copy of a card exiled with Mimic Vat. Gains haste, exile to begin the next end step. So, it's a good, good card. Uh, makes copies of things that have died. Uh, only one thing at a time. You have to swap out each time something dies. You have the option to switch it to that. So you can upgrade it as the game goes on and bigger threats die, or better combo pieces from your own deck. Mirror Works costs 5 for an artifact. Whenever another non-token artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay 2. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that artifact. Um, 2 mana for copies of really good artifacts feels great, so I think we'll keep that around. Mirror Battlesphere is a fun card. It costs 7 for 4 7. When it enters the battlefield, create 4 mirror tokens. And whenever it attacks, you may tap X untap mirror you control. If you do, it gets plus X plus O until end of turn and deals X damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. So, <clears throat> even if you only have the 4 mirror you played with it, you swing with this and tap the 4 mirror, you get an 8 7 attacking and they take 4 right away. So, I like Mirror Batters for the year. If you can be making more Mirror, it's obviously going to get crazy. Prototype Portal. Uh, four generic for an artifact with imprint. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile an artifact card from your hand. Uh, pay X and tap. Create a token that's a copy of the exiled card. X is the converter mana cost of that card. Um, so, it turns one artifact into a repeatable. So, Yes, I don't know what I was saying there. My words just went away. Um, but I like it. Copies are good. Psychosis Crawler, 5 generic for an artifact creature horror. Power and toughness equal, each equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Um, there is a decent amount of card draw, so one damage is that. But... I feel like this is the kind of deck where I'm going to want to be emptying my hand a lot. So, I don't... not a big fan. So gonna... Scuttling Doom Engine. 6 generic for an artifact creature construct. 6-6. Six, six. Can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. When it dies, it deals 6 damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Um... It's just a lot of words. 
Six damage to their face when it dies, or Planeswalker. Dealing damage to Planeswalkers is always good. Uh, it's an artifact, so it's on theme. Can't be block can't be chump blocked. I guess it's it's pretty good. I'm gonna throw it in the maybe pile for right now, something I might consider counting or cutting at some point. Uh, Steel Hellkite. Another really solid card. Six for a five five artifact dragon. Flying, pay two to give it plus one plus zero until end of turn, and then you can pay X, destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. It's a very wordy ability. Uh, you swing in, you deal damage, you can blow up all their stuff that costs X by paying X. Um, important to note that it is everything that costs exactly X, not X or less. I saw someone make that mistake recently. So, important note, but still a very solid card. Especially against tokens where you can pay X of zero and wipe out. Thopter Assembly. Six generic for a 5-5 five, five flying artifact creature Thopter. The beginning of your upkeep, if you control no Thopters other than Thopter Assembly, return Thopter Assembly to its owner's hand and create five 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. Um, so it's a 5-5 five, five flyer for six, which is not great, but it is what it is. Um, it's an artifact, so it fits the theme, and then its ability, where if you have no other Thopters, you make five, seems... Very handy in a pinch when you, if you get behind and aren't don't have tokens. Unwinding clock uh, four for an artifact. Untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step. Obviously, we'd love to do that. Oh, here's some more basic lands, islands. That's a lot of islands. Mountains. Uh, Forge of Heroes. Add to colors. Choose target commander that entered the battlefield this turn. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it if it's a creature, and a loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker. Free loyalty counters are always good. Can't can't turn down free loyalty counters. Uh, buried Ruin. Taps for a colorless. Pay two, tap and sack it to return target artifact card from graveyard to your hand. Uh, getting artifact cards back seems good. Uh, command Tower, I, unless you're running a colorless commander, I don't see any reason not to play Command Tower, unless you have, like, something where basics matter or something. I mean, even if you are in mono color, it still taps for your one color you need. I mean, it's pointless there, but in two color, there's, there's no reason not to. I don't see a downside. Um, Darksteel Citadel, an artifact land, indestructible. Taps for colorless. It's an artifact for free. It's indestructible. Seems good. Foundry of the Councils. Uh, taps for colorless. Pay five. Tap sack it to create two one one color stop to artifact creature tokens of flying. Um, I'm not a fan, but it does tap for colorless and comes in untapped. So why not? Um, I don't know that I would. I would feel pretty bad about if I was in the situation where I needed those two tokens that badly, but I guess late game, maybe I just don't need the land anymore. Uh, Great Furnace, an artifact land that taps for red. Uh, Highland Lake enters tapped. Is it Boilerworks? Bounces a land, enters tapped, taps for blue and red. Uh, is it Guildgate? Also enters tapped for blue and red. Seed of the Cyanide is the blue artifact land. Obviously, artifact lands are going to be good here. Um, Saltwater Swift Water Cliffs, sorry. Uh, enters tapped and you gain a life. Taps are blue or red, so obviously that's solid. It's a weird little uh, card that they threw at the end. So, um, it's, it looks like a fun deck, something I would probably enjoy playing. Um, I know off the top of my head, Joyra is the first thing that comes to my mind. Joyra is a get to the. Or Joyra Weatherlight Captain, not Joyra the get to. I said the wrong Joyra. Um, from Dominaria would obviously be a great fit here. Anytime I hear Artifact Deck, 
think of that, and she's in the right colors, so why wouldn't you? Um, Storm the Vault, because um, once it flips, obviously it's real good for an artifact deck. Um, Doretti, good artifact planeswalker. Goblin Welder is obviously a fun card with artifacts, so there's a lot of there's a lot of options to be added. I mean, I think we came up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 cards I would probably cut for sure, and another 3 that were pretty strong maybes, so up to 18 cards that I would cut just off a first pass. So there's lots of options to add, just trying to find good... Uh, even the other Sahili wouldn't be a bad include. Um, War of Invention would be good. Um, Dark Steel Forge could be fun. I don't remember if I already said Tezzeret. There's a couple Tezzerets, I think, that could work well. It tends to have artifact themes. Um, Foundry Inspector, another coupon for all your artifacts. Uh, Master of Ethereum would be an option. There's just so many options. Throw a Thran Dynamo in for mana. Um, definitely a fun start to a deck. Um, Joyous Familiar would be another coupon. Make all your historic spells cheaper. So this is probably a deck that I'll keep together with some modifications. Um, wanted to build Joyra from Dominaria ever since I saw it, so I might potentially make her the commander instead of Sahili. but um, Blue-Red Artifact is a fun thing and something I definitely want to look at further. So um, let me know in the comments if there's anything you think I missed that's a real obvious include, um, or if I cut something that you think should have been left. Um, like I said, it was my first time looking through the deck. I did look online a little bit at some ideas of what other people would do with it, but um, I'm always open to more input, and it, like I said, it's probably a deck I'll continue to work on. So let me know what you think of the deck and what you thought of this video, since it's a new type for me, the first time I've attempted this um, style uh, dealing with the deck. Uh, mostly I've just done box openings, so um, let me know what you think of the video, what you think I should do better if I do this again, which I probably will with the other Commander decks from 2018 for sure, and then like I said, I'd like to move into my personal modern decks, uh, kind of go through those, my Commander decks as well. So let me know, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and uh, thanks!